Sergio Martinez has won 28 fights in a row, and he is a guy that everybody is talking about. Right now, I think Sergio Martinez has the confidence advantage. He's got 44 wins and 24 knockouts on his resume. Someone who can really make a mark. Fight fans, welcome back. He was a silky southpaw who swapped Buenos Aires box sauce for the Madrid heat. Exciting stateside crowds with a tripwire. Hands down style that tempted opponents in before exploding with fast, powerful shots. This Argentine road warrior paid his dues before finally hitting the big time and embarking on an enthralling middleweight reign. Here we present Five times Sergio Maravilla Martinez dominated his opponents. Welcome to a Motivedia presentation. Sergio Maravilla! Raised in a tough, working class environment, the always athletic Sergio Martinez chose soccer and cycling to escape adolescent brutality. Succumbing to the lure of the noble art, Martinez linked up with trainer Gabriel Sarmiento and adopted a have gloves will travel attitude in an attempt to make up for lost time and find his fortune. His rise to prominence is nothing short of extraordinary. He took up boxing at the age of 20 after dabbling in other sports. I started with 20 years of boxing. It was new, but it was bigger than almost all. On the second day of the gym, I realized that I was going to be a boxer. This journey led to some memorable boxing nights as Sergio lit up arenas, becoming must-see TV. And he comes to us from Buenos Aires, Argentina. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner. He is from Tijuana, Baja California, Mexico. You need people like me. Coming out of a hard-bitten background in the slums of Tijuana. That an illegal pad was found in Margarito's gloves. You need people like me. You need people like me so you can point your fingers. I say, that's the bad guy. You don't know nothing about me. About to take off in five, four, three, two, one. Lot of y'all doubt it on me. Now they like, wow, look how far you come. Stop it. Eight ball been up in the pocket. Antonio Margarito and Sergio Gabriel Martinez. A big mistake for Martinez. You ain't got nothing on me. The next one, Cortez looking. Antonio Margarito. You just enjoyed the fight? I just you enjoyed, enjoyed the, the fight. L? Ten years ago, they were not friends because they were fighting each other. Well, we're friends right now. Friendship. Having claimed the title at 154. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Interim Super Welterweight Championship. Alex, the technician, Bonima. Bonima represents probably the toughest fight of Martinez's career so far. That is and a good right in. Eats another left hook. Yes, and that right hand will end the fight. After having been in against some of the toughest guys in the division and at one point moving up to fight Jermaine Taylor at 160 pounds. Lima's very dangerous himself. He's coming back with pass punches. Larry, I knew he was going to come to fight. I saw in his tape, I remember him saying in an interview he was going to overpower my jab. He can't touch my jab. Can't nobody out there touch that jab. For Vernon Forrest. Oh. Hard left hand puts Benima on his back. He ate some real demand. Well, I mean, obviously Martinez is hyped up to be on HBO's Boxing After Dark. So maybe he's figured something out. Benitez needs to give him a lot more pressure and let him think about a lot more things. Good jab by Martinez. It's been one-sided throughout the whole fight, and then it only takes one punch. It's more important things than this. Yes. Are you okay? And now, the WBC Interim Super Welterweight Champion! In his first middleweight test, Martinez dropped a majority verdict to Paul Williams. The interesting thing to me about Paul Williams, I've never quite seen this in my lifetime, a fighter so avoided. You're talking about a very scary guy. 
He's excited to watch. Because he's six foot one, he throws punches in bunches. No one wants to fight this guy, Jim. Antonio Margarito at a point where he looked indestructible. Both Shane Mosley and Floyd Mayweather reportedly turning down $8 million paydays. Antonio Margarito like wanted to fight me extremely bad. That gave him an aura of danger. So oh, no, no. Really, you know. And then come to find out, ladies and gentlemen, this guy was cheating. Paul Williams beat him. Man, Margarito, yeah. that guy showed me what it is to be a top champion. So like, you want it? Since Margarito couldn't get inside, Williams peppered him with straight right hands, with right chips. You got to go in and take it from the time. That's what I did, so. Certainly, Williams has made some fans here tonight with his non-stop style. Straight left hand with uppercuts. And the new WBO welterweight champion of the world. Sergio Martinez says, oh, heck yes, I can beat him. Can he? Oh, that's what I would do, all that trash talking on it. You don't really get too much of that from me. I do it all in the ring. Martinez has a better chance than any 154 pound I believe in the world. A 154 pound mover, here we go. Two southpaws in the ring. He shoots and get out of position and leaves himself open when he's coming for And down he goes on a left hand to the temple. Shocking, but it looked as though it was a combination of bad balance and the punch landing. Before the fight. Ripping Williams. Hard right hand, and Williams goes down. And Martinez has evened the round. But just get back and be calm. Man up on your jail. And Paul Williams keeps coming. The orbit. Hard left hand by Williams. Right, three more right hooks. And clocks Williams with a left. And Williams fires back. And they're trading shots. 119 to 110, Paul the Punisher! He's a, he's a warrior, man, and I like that, you know what I'm saying? Because I know he's going to get some big shots in. And I'm going to get some big shots in, too. What do you think of the 119-110 scorecard? I'm asking Sergio Martinez. I think it, it was an error. It was a true error. I had five pupils. Test your might. The tough fights continued as he battled a hometown hero from Youngstown, Ohio, desperate to put his career back on track. Kelly Pavlik confirmed his unified middleweight status in two thrillers with Jermaine Taylor. The pride of Little Rock, Arkansas. We have two guys from Arkansas here. One's a boxer and the other one's been a punching bag. <laughs> <laughs> I did not. You just get that feeling of someone whose ambition, determination, right hand. to get the most out of his talent. We eat good tonight. They the fought each the other in the Olympic trials in the year 2000 when Jermaine was four years older at age 21. He was experienced, he was older. You know, I learned a lot from that fight. Touch, glove, thank you. Finish him. How close were you to being knocked out in the second round? You really want to know what I thought? Yeah. This is going to be a long night. <laughs> so Pavlik was down four points on the scorecards when he knocked Taylor out. An ill-advised jump up to light heavyweight had resulted in his first loss to Bernard Hopkins. I with Kelly. Um, I watched Kelly when I grew up. So um, you trained Pavlik, right? Yeah, I, I worked his uh, corner in some amateur fights. He moved on to the pros. He beat everybody that they put in front of him. Except Bernard Hopkins. Hold on a second. You didn't see him when he fought Bernard Hopkins? I never been pretty close. I would not shut up, but I kept winning. I kept winning, and when you win, people has to listen. Let me straighten my eyes. I don't need to get tired. Uh, what was it like fighting Bernard? Ooh. <laughs> Beating Pavlik to the punch as Kelly kept trying to come in. Bernard with faster hands ripped him with combinations on the inside. Hustle, 
that was not an 80% Kelly Pavlik. What's um, wrong? What was wrong? I had bronchitis. I was sick. I was running a temp actually in the locker room. So the ghost returned to 160 to defend his WBC and WBO straps. Kelly's in shape, man. I, I, you know, I've done enough fights with Kelly to see the difference. And he's got a six pack right now. He's on weight, I can tell. It's going to be a battle of, of technicality, speed, agility against pure brawn and punching power. I have all the ambition of the world to get this opportunity and I will never let it go. And definitely I will take my championship to Argentina. Touch guard, go up. And there's Paul Williams right there. Every day I've been working. With Pavlik cut early, the bout was effectively split into thirds. As Martinez's speed told, 10K on a dash. I hope the whip don't crash. The champion enjoyed success in the middle fortune, even scoring a flash knockdown. Hard right hand by Pavlik. Down goes Martinez. Before Sergio closed strong to fulfill his world level ambitions. Victory established Martinez as one of the main men in the middleweight picture. And new middleweight! What does it feel like? Se siente un orgullo tremendo, increíble. He fought a smart fight. I mean, he would double up on that left hand. Nothing I could really do about it. Oh! Well done. Almost a year after the pair had engaged in a classic boardwalk hall rumble, Sergio Martinez and Paul Williams resumed hostilities at the same location. The fight took place at a 158 pound catch weight. Despite being stripped by the WBO, Martinez still held the WBC title, ring magazine honors, and a lineal middleweight claim. Sebastian Sylvester held the IBF title and Felix Sturm the WBA. I see something I want now. You know, I want the belt that he got on that table. And so it's my job to write and take it. We try to redo it, what we did before, and do it again. The sizable Paul Williams was notorious for standing inside and trading with opponents. This strategy had served him well for the most part, but a slip up was about to cost him dearly. It's November already. It's getting pretty late, and there's no obvious candidate for fight of the year. Yeah for the WBC Middleweight Championship of the World. I'll give you even money right now that you're about to see it. Let the ride begin. After a tense opener. Midway point of round one. Martinez caught Williams with a ferocious left hook that sent the Punisher face first on the canvas as a stunned crowd watched on. Good left hand, and down goes right. Williams! I think it was a right, right hand. I gotta give it whatever it takes. No competition, I'm raising the stakes. I hit it hard, I ain't taking a break. That's how you know I ain't come here to play. Not getting up, guys. Tears in my eyes, sweat on my face. Wow, where did that come from? We had it prepared. It was the product of a lot of work. We worked really hard. And most people are like, oh, man, I'm not going to take a take a punch. I don't care. If it land right, it's good night. <laughs> good left hand. Oh. And I know that I went good night. <laughs> it was land right. You know what I'm saying? He running in the ring, jumping up stuff. I'm looking like, yo, something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> they put the crown on his head. I like, how he get the crown? Probably ain't start yet. Fatality. Following political machinations, Martinez defended the WBC middleweight diamond belt when challenger Darren Barker came to town. What you know about hustle? Dazzling. Undefeated in 23 outings, Dazzling Darren was a talented operator who had cleaned up on the domestic and European circuits. Let me guy and I have a drink somewhere. Oh, I'll go on then. Dazzling! Future middleweight champion of the world. I don't know if you saw him on Sky, but a lot of people were talking about other careers for him. Yeah. Sports broadcasting. Like Gucci. Modeling. To be honest, I've really dedicated my life uh, to the sport. Over 100 amateur fighters representing my country. 
a number of times, winning gold medals. Looking for his eighth straight win for his country. It's another Californian for the Americans here, Timothy Bradley, <laughs> Jr., 19 years of age. Bradley in the blue corner! I'm here to prove that the underdog can call a massive upset. You might not know who I am now, but come first of October, you'll know exactly who that and Dan Barker is. Martinez had honed a style based on instincts and reflexes that troubled even the best of opponents. Barker was no exception as he toiled to work out the portside Rubik's Cube placed in front of him. Despite a valiant effort, the Londoner was repeatedly tagged by Martinez flurries and resigned to an increasingly defensive posture when stopped in the 11th. Finish him! I already see red. Ah, you know Response and I don't think Barker's getting up. You know, I truly believe I could win, and I don't know. The winner by knockout victory, and still. Oh! Fatality. <laughs> by this point, Ring Magazine had Martinez third in their esteemed pound for pound rankings. Sergio was actively pursuing an evasive Miguel Cotto. The son of a legend, unbeaten Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. had established himself as a competent competitor in his own right. He's just not a natural fighter like his father was. Chavez comes in with a right hand lead and a combination. Hey, well, there are no legs underneath him. He has to work out a little bit harder, but he's willing to do the work though. Arriving off the back of an impressive stoppage over Andy Lee. His camp might argue Sergio Martinez just wasn't worth the money for the risk. Una mentira, Junior, como campeón del mundo. Es una vergüenza de ser campeón. He's angry because of the way he's been treated up to this point by the title organizations or whoever you want to blame. He's looking at Chavez in his eyes saying, I got something to prove. You know you're not supposed to have that title. That's my belt. Why are you wearing it? You know you're wearing it the wrong way. You called him a ballerina today. Why? Porque es una bailarina. Maravilla, bailarina. <laughs> He's saying you won't stand and fight him. For 11 rounds, Martinez led Chavez a merry dance as the Mexican labored to close the distance. That was until a tumultuous final session when Martinez was floored oh, there you go. Yeah. and forced to hang on for a well earned win. I think with his experience he did. They were telling me to throw more punches, but I feel very tight. So now you have Sergio Manavilla Martinez, superstar. After the fight, our cameras caught in your locker room a moment you were drinking in what had happened in the fight. The fight against Chavez was a fight that was a great emotion, something much bigger. Outstanding. By this stage, the middleweight division had two explosive Eastern European beasts emerge from the shadows. Russia's grandmaster Dmitry Pirog blitzed onto the scene Ready, down. Hunt, hunt, hunt. by snapping Daniel Jacobs' unbeaten slate the golden child. and golden child reputation. Here's the right hand, and boom! I think it was intentional, and I don't think it was. Oh, oh down goes Jacob yeah. on a perfect right hand, right on top. and that may be that. Yes, this happened to Jorge Linares, who was in the uh, first undercard fight here tonight. It happened to Amir Khan. Amir Khan has got this new trainer hold on. Oh, and he's hurt! And he's hurt! And he's hurt! Another huge left! It happened to Andy Lee. Ryan Farrell looking for the upset. He doesn't know how to tie up. It happens sometimes to young prospects. This doesn't have to be the end of anything. Two years later, if you're a hardcore boxing fan, maybe you remember Golovkin from the Athens Olympics. Gennady Golovkin announced himself with a fifth round shellacking of Gregor's Praska in New York. Oh, he oh, right hand hurt Praska. Golovkin steps in and down he goes again. This is your debut on American television on HBO. First fight here. This is my dream now. This is my dream. 
Fighting at home in Argentina for the first time in over a decade, Sergio Martinez was determined to put on a show for a fervent crowd of 40,000 baking in the Buenos Aires heat. Unintimidated by the atmosphere, unbeaten opponent Martin Murray was a British hard man. Who had overcome a difficult start in life. You know, work really as, as for me coming up was, was non-existent. There was no jobs in in the town really. And previously pushed Felix Sturm to a draw in Germany. What do you think? Step too far, too soon for Murray? It's, it's a very big step, but um, you know, when are you ever ready? You know, he's young, he's he, he's enthusiastic. Look at this! Phenomenal effort from Martin Murray. And, you know, I'm just, just happy that it's here now and I just can't wait to go over there and get in the ring and become world champion. Look at the rapture on Sergio Martinez's face. Argentinos, estamos listos! Familiar with hitting the deck throughout his career, Sergio was dropped by a right hand in the eighth round. Come on, goes Martinez on a straight right hand. But rallied to victory despite Murray's best efforts down the stretch. Even though Martinez won by a unanimous decision, it showed that Father Time was catching up. And I wanted to have a great show, but today I hurt my hand, I hurt my left hand, and I might be broken. It was a very rough fight. The second time I put him down, it didn't class it a knockdown, it was a knockdown, but once again, Sergio's a great fighter and a great champion. His body creaked under increasing pressure, and the road to retirement was fast approaching. These five victories, along with his battles against a host of championship contenders and no surrender effort against Miguel Cotto, are why Sergio Martinez's name is held in such high regard today, an unexpectedly glittering career that may not be over yet. Sergio Maravilla! Fight fans, welcome back. Today we're looking at John Connor versus Floyd Mayweather. Hasta la vista, baby. I'll be back in the next Motovidia presentation.